Atari Joystick Game Token is back because we have another video board game to review and that game is Backgammon for your Intellivision. Let's go ahead and take Backgammon. Let's pop it in my television and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. ABPA Backgammon or American Backgammon Player Association Backgammon or just plain backgammon when it was re-released later on, was published by Mattel Electronics. According to the Blue Sky Rangers website, it was part of the 1979 test market and was the 13th game officially released coming out on October 16, 1980. They give programming credit to Kevin Miller, who also worked on a few other television games including NASL Soccer and NFL Football. The game would also be one of the three games included on the compilation cartridge, Triple Challenge, which would come out late in the system's life. And in case you were wondering, the American Backgammon Players Association does appear to be a real association from that time period, as I found the name mentioned in some old backgammon related flyers, but I'm unsure if it still exists today. The manual opens with the following. In television, backgammon is identical with the board game. You can play against the built-in computer at two different skill levels, one for beginners or intermediates, another for experts. You can sharpen your game, become a player of championship caliber. If you like, two players can compete against each other. All the strategy, luck, and suspense of today's most popular board game are at your fingertip electronic control. Backgammon is for one or two players. If you don't know how to play backgammon, here's some of the basics. The board is set up with checkers already placed on designated colored wedges. Your goal is to move your pieces into your home area. That's the quadrant that has two of your opponent's pieces on the edge wedge at the start. And then move all of your pieces off the board before they do. You move around the board in a U shape. When the game begins, a random dice roll determines who goes first, with that person using the roll to move. When moving your pieces, you can either split the two numbers of the dice between two separate pieces or use both to have a single piece make two separate moves. If you throw doubles, you get four moves to make instead of two, and you can split these up between up to four pieces if you wish. You can only land on wedges that are empty or have your color pieces already on them, or have a single piece of your opponent. If a wedge has multiple pieces of your opponent, you cannot move on it. If a player lands on an opponent's single piece, it goes onto the bar. If a player has any pieces on the bar, on their turn, they must use their roll to place pieces from the bar onto a wedge in their opponent's home quadrant, and cannot move any other pieces until they remove all of their pieces off of the bar. If you have no more possible moves after rolling at any time, your opponent can take a turn. If you get all of your checkers into your home quadrant, you can begin to move them off the board with your rolls, counting the far edge as a space. If you roll a large number, like a 5 or 6, but all of your pieces are closer to the edge than that number, you can still move pieces that are furthest away off of the board. The first player to remove all their pieces wins. Those are just the basics and there are more in-depth rules available at various places online if you're interested in learning more. The overlay is very helpful for this game. You use the third row to select either a two player game or a level one or more difficult level two single player game. You can also use the level two button to give up your game when playing. To move a checker after rolling the dice, you first select which checker you want to move with the disc and then use the top two rows of the keypad to select which dice you want to use and then hit enter to confirm your move or clear to start over. If you roll doubles, you can move two pieces at the same time by using the move to button. If you wanted to move four pieces from the same wedge after rolling doubles, you'd have to use this process twice. The side buttons allow for a pip count. This number shows how many total moves it would take to move your pieces off of the board and is a way to figure out who is in the lead during the game. Since there is no limit to the number of checkers on a wedge, but the wedge is limited in space, you could stack checkers to make pieces fit. The Intellivision version uses dashes to show stacked pieces. And that is Intellivision Backgammon in a nutshell. It's a basic game with two difficulties with no extras like an AC Ducey mode or the doubling cube. Graphically speaking, there really isn't much to the game going on, but it gets the job done. Sound wise, the end game sounds are sparse and limited, but the game does play a small victory or losing theme ditty at the end depending on the outcome.
family friendly wise the game would most likely get an e for everyone rating if released today currently at pricecharting.com the game has a value of nine dollars loose twenty dollars complete and forty dollars new so what did i think of abpa backgammon as someone who enjoys playing video backgammon it's solid some more options or difficulty levels would have been nice but the computer does a good job challenging me and the game moves at a good pace running around 10 minutes even at the higher difficulty and it would have been nice if when you selected a checker to move the game highlighted possible landing spots as i've seen in other video backgammon games but it's not that hard just to count overall while it's not a must play it's still an enjoyable game that i could easily play again so where am i going to rank backgammon it's going to my top 30 among some other television games i enjoy playing I do like Pinball more at 25, but I will put this over Body Slam Super Pro Wrestling at 26. So out of the 63 games that now ranked for the Intellivision, Backgammon is rolling into the 26th position. ABPA Backgammon does a solid job bringing Backgammon to the Intellivision. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care, everybody.